There's cute and furry critters out there that we all love. And then there's also scuttling, venomous, and scary critters that don't quite get as much love at all. Yeah, I'm talking about insects. Some people are fascinated by insects, but a lot of us are a little freaked out by them at times. And often for good reason, they can be some of the deadliest creatures on Earth. From the literal cow killer to the ant that's known for its pure aggression and fiery temperament, here's 20 deadly insects you don't want to mess with. <sighs> Number 20. The Cow Killer Velvet ants, aka the cow killer, are found all over the world. The bright, fuzzy fur on their bodies gives them their name. But what kind of insect is it? This bug is not, in fact, an ant. Instead, it's a kind of wasp. And the females have no wings, and they just kind of look like ants. Weird as this might feel for you, ants and wasps are in the same group, so they actually have a lot in common. It doesn't have a node or two on its waist, which is something that all ants have. The cow killer has many ways to protect itself. In addition to their bright colors and warning sounds, they move quickly, have a strong exoskeleton, and can make nasty smells. Oh, and the females are able to give a very painful sting. The ovipositor, which is the female's large stinger, is a modified egg-laying organ. Based on one of the scientists' evaluation of stinging insects, the Schmitz Pain Index, which ranks and describes insect stings, it gives it a score of 3 out of 4. Because of this, they can hurt pretty badly if you touch them or step on them, which is why they're called cow killers. Alright, confession time. As far as we know, a sting has never actually killed a cow, though, which is definitely a relief for our bovine friends. Time for the rare topic. This poor girl was having some serious pains in the nose and ended up having to see a specialist to figure out what was wrong. After taking a look inside, they discovered an insect had become lodged in her nasal cavity. Really gross. But when they took it out, things only got weirder. It was shaped like a face hugger from the movie Alien. No one had any idea what this thing could be, but if it's a new insect, we got another terrifying addition to our list. Or maybe it was just a toy that got stuck up there? What do you think about this insect? Are we facing an alien invasion? As always, comment down below with the hashtag RareTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. Let's move on to the next one. Number 19. The Red Imported Fire Ant what else is there to know about ants besides the fact that they're food for black widows? We'll come back to that fact later, but for now, there's plenty of other weird facts about the red fire ant. The Solenopsis genus has more than 200 species of ants. Most of them are called fire ants, which tells you that they really can sting. Fire ant stings cause urticaria, which makes the affected area feel like it's on fire. Within hours, a lump forms at the site of the sting, which can cause more pain and suffering, especially if many stings happen at the same time. Within 24 to 36 hours, the bump could turn into a white pustule. If you scratch it, it could spread an infection, but if you leave it alone, it'll flatten out in a few days. For first aid, medications that are put on the skin or taken by mouth can help with fire ant stings. There's also some home remedies that may or may not work, like using a solution of half bleach and half water or aloe vera gel, which is often found in over-the-counter lotions that also contain treatments that have been tested and approved by doctors. If you don't get help for a severe allergic reaction to a fire ant sting, it could even kill you. Number 18. Blister Beetles Cantharidin, a chemical made by blister beetles, is sometimes used to get rid of warts. People have been interested in the beetle since the 1800s because cantharidin is also thought to be an aphrodisiac. What the people eating this love potion didn't know was that the cantharidin was actually destroying the lining of their digestive tracts. If you put the cantharidin on your skin, it could cause a severe case of dermatitis, which could be extra bad if you put it on an area that might need, uh, aphrodisiacs. But if the beetle was eaten, it could kill the person. So people started licking the beetles to get the cantharidin instead of eating them. Blister beetles also do a lot of damage to crops and plants. They pose a bigger threat to horses, cows, and sheep, which could accidentally eat a lot of cantharidin if it's ground up and mixed with hay. The beetle's toxin stays in the body for a long time after it dies. It can irritate and inflame the digestive and urinary tracts, and depending on how much is eaten, it could cause death in about 72 hours. Number 17. 
Japanese Wasp, Murder Hornet The Asian giant hornet is the biggest hornet in the world. It can be up to about 2 inches long and 3 inches wide, including wings, and it has a huge 4th inch stinger that carries the deadly venom. This hornet's a super predator that eats bees, mantises, and either other hornets that are bigger than it. It likes to attack beehives, and their usual method is to send out two or three scout hornets to check things out, before letting out pheromones that tell the rest of the hornet swarm that everything looks good and they should come over for a slaughter. When they come in contact with western honeybee nests, they can kill up to 40 bees per minute. This is because the Asian giant hornet doesn't naturally come into contact with western honeybees. But get ready, it's going to surprise you. Humans have made it more likely for them to do so. People in Japan know about these hornets because they kill 12 to 13 people every year, most of whom are allergic to their stings. Even if you aren't allergic, hornet stings hurt a lot. After coming to the U.S. in 2019, they're likely to be seen by a lot more people as they move across the country. But on the other hand, like in Japan, they may become part of the local cuisine and be considered a treat when fried. Number 16. Black Widow Spider Okay, we know, it's not an insect, but we just couldn't help ourselves and leave it out. Lactrodectris mactans, also called the southern black widow, is a venomous spider in the genus Lactrodectus. The females are easy to spot because they're black and red, and they sometimes eat their mates after mating, which is weird and gross and scary. Only in North America can you find this species. The venom rarely kills a healthy person, though, despite their fearsome reputation. John Christian Fabricius wrote about the Black Widow for the first time in 1775, but people were already afraid of it at that point. The Southern Widow is native to the southeast of the U.S., but it can be found as far north as Ohio and as far west as Texas. Even though its range overlaps with that of its southern cousin, the Northern Black Widow is mostly found in the northeastern U.S. and southeastern Canada. Black Widow spiders eat many different kinds of bugs, but as I mentioned earlier, if they can get their hands on fire ants, they want to eat those. They seem to love spicy food. Adult females, but not the much smaller males, can inject venom into humans. This is because their chelicerae, which are hollow, needle-like mouth parts that inject venom, are about one millimeter long, which is much longer than the males. Number 15. Monarch Caterpillar the female monarch butterfly puts each egg on its own leaf of a milkweed plant. She does this by secreting a bit of glue that sticks the egg to the leaf. Over the course of two to five weeks, a female lays between 300 and 500 eggs. After a few days, the eggs turn into larvae, which in the world of moths and butterflies are called caterpillars. Since their main job is to grow, caterpillars spend most of their time eating. But they only eat milkweed, which is why the female puts her eggs on milkweed leaves in the first place. The famous monarch butterfly is one of the most dangerous bugs you'll find, but you'd never think it. Its orange and black color is actually telling you, yo, stay away. It's the monarch caterpillar's milkweed-only diet that's the issue. This plant is poisonous, and it can stop the heart from beating properly. After about two weeks of eating, the caterpillars spin protective cases around themselves to go into the pupa stage, which is also called the chrysalis stage. About a week or two later, they finish changing into adult monarch butterflies. Number 14. The Brown Recluse the brown recluse spider's venom kills living things. This spider doesn't mess around. Like other recluse spider bites, theirs sometimes needs medical attention as it can cause necrosis. Necrosis is a type of cell damage that leads to autolysis, which kills live cells. Most brown recluse spiders are between 6 and 20 millimeters long, but they can get much bigger. Most of the time, they're light to medium brown, but they can also be white, dark brown, or blackish gray. The cephalothorax and abdomen don't always have the same color. Because other spiders might also have patterns that look like the violin pattern, it isn't a sure way to tell which spiders are which. Also, another interesting detail is while other spiders have eight eyes, recluse spiders only have six eyes, one pair in the middle and two pairs on the sides. Only a small number of spiders have three sets of eyes like this. The violin shape on the brown recluse spider gets clearer as it gets older, and adult spiders have black violin shapes on their backs. If in doubt, stay away from this dangerous critter. Number 13. White-Tailed Spider 
Let's take a look at another arachnid now. For a long time, experts have argued about whether or not white-tailed spider bites can cause severe skin ulcers, but the truth is, you don't want to find out the hard way. White-tailed spiders have a cigar-shaped body that's dark reddish to gray and has orange-brown bands on the legs. The male has a hard, narrow plate or scute on the front of the abdomen. White-tailed spiders are wandering hunters that live under bark and rocks, in leaf litter, logs, and other trash in the bush, gardens, and houses. When bitten by a white-tailed spider, you might feel burning pain at first, followed by swelling and itching where you were bitten. Necrotizing arachnidism is a medical term for wounds, blisters, or sores that are caused by spider bites. People still argue about whether or not white-tailed spider bites are to blame for severe ulcers on the skin of people who have likely been bitten by spiders. Most of the time, there's no direct evidence that a spider bit the person. The white-tailed spider's gotten a bad rep because of what the media has said about supposed cases of severe necrotizing arachnidism. A recent study, though, looked at the medical results of over 100 confirmed white-tailed spider bites and found that not a single one caused ulcers. Based on what we know, skin ulceration is not a common result of a bite from a white-tailed spider, but it's probably better to leave them in peace if you find one. Number 12. European Wasps The European wasp comes from Europe, North Africa, and some parts of Asia. It spread to North America, South America, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand through aggressive colonization. Humans often help spread invasive species, even if it is by accident. The genus Vespula has several species of social wasps, like the English wasp, which is very similar to the European wasp and shares many traits with it. The European wasp is about 15 millimeters long, has a thin waist, and has yellow and black markings that stand out. It looks different than the English wasp because it's got three tiny black dots on its face. And a slightly different pattern on its abdomen. Because these things can vary, it can be hard to tell for sure. The European wasp is very effective, opportunistic, and a ruthless hunter and scavenger that doesn't care what it eats. It eats many different kinds of insects and spiders, and it can beat out many other competitors for food. This makes it a threat to native wildlife wherever it's been brought in. Most places outside of its natural range think of it as a pest. It may have been brought to Australia and New Zealand in the late 19th century, but it started to cause problems around 1940. The weather in Victoria, and especially around Melbourne, is perfect for the wasps, which are becoming a bigger problem, especially in late summer and early fall. European wasps like sugary drinks a lot, and they're more aggressive than bees. They can sting over and over, causing redness, swelling, and a very painful burning feeling. Number 11. Bullet. Bull ants are very big and very mean. They got big eyes, long, skinny jaws, and a powerful sting that hurts like hell. They have good eyesight and can see intruders from a distance of one meter. If they really want you to leave, they can even follow you and chase you. Many species of bull ants have bright red or orange heads or abdomens. About 90 different kind of bull ants live and act in different ways in Australia. There might be more that haven't been found yet. Some of the smaller species are called jumper ants because they jump at people. These guys are just plain angry all the time. Number 10. Paralysis Tick The paralysis tick is a dangerous parasite that lives on the east coast of Australia and threatens both people and their pets. In humans, it irritates the skin in the bitten area very badly. It can make pets paralyzed, sick, have trouble breathing, or even die. The eastern paralysis tick gets to Melbourne by riding on people, pets, or things that have been to infested areas. Ticks are called deadly, blood-sucking animals, which is a perfect way to describe them. They like to live in places with lots of trees, brush, and tall grass. To find a host, ticks quest, or climb onto plants and slowly weave their forelegs until the host comes close enough to touch. When they're on the host, they might not attack right away. Instead, they might wander around for up to two hours before attaching themselves to the back of the head or behind an ear. Tick paralysis can be caused by just one tick bite, and it causes the animal to lose control of its back legs, have trouble breathing, vomit, and become paralyzed all over its body. If you see signs of tick paralysis in your pet, it's important to get help from a vet immediately. Save your furry baby. Number nine, red back spiders. Uh, the female of the species, softer, more sensitive, and more gentle than the male. 
also in this case more than twice as big as the male, full of deadly neurotoxin venom, and of course, she likes to eat her mates. It's the red back spider we're talking about. If you see one of the skinny males who are only about as wide as half a fingernail, you don't have much to worry about. In fact, the males and young spiders tend to live on the edges of strong females' webs, where they feel more secure. When an unlucky creature gets caught in the web, the spider sprays it with a kind of spider super glue and then ties it up with spider silk. Once the victim is in this mummified state, the female redback will bite the head and limbs of it several times with its highly complex and powerful venom, paralyzing it and then eats the liquidated insides. When a brave male falls in love with one of these scary spider ladies, the female will usually eat the male during sex. Whew. The venom that female redback spiders give off is very dangerous to people, and to make things worse, they seem to love making webs in places where people like to live, like, you know, our houses. They don't usually leave their webs though, so as long as you don't touch them, you should be fine. But guys, think of yourself as lucky. It's not easy being a male redback. Number 8. Funnel Web Spiders this time, it's a well-known threat to civilization that every sensible Australian knows about, the funnel web spider, which is in the news a lot down under. Aside from being big and heavy, this spider can grow up to two inches long, and its fangs point down instead of side to side like most spiders. This makes it a particularly dangerous biter. And these teeth are strong and sharp enough to easily bite through a pair of shoes or a human fingernail. Along with the bite, the funnel web also injects a large amount of venom into its victim's body. Funnel webs are burrowing spiders that live under rocks, logs, or pretty much anything else that you might pile up in your backyard, like a shrub garden. They love to scare people who go outside and put their hands in any cool, dark, and moist places they find. Their burrows are usually easy to spot because they have a kind of funnel made of silk that the animals use as a tripwire. When the spider feels a vibration, she jumps up and gets ready to bite whatever happens to be walking by. Number 7. Assassin Caterpillar the Lonomia obliqua, which is also called the assassin caterpillar, is a poisonous caterpillar that can kill a person. In fact, it's the most dangerous caterpillar on Earth. A few stings from this bug can cause internal bleeding that can kill you and shut down your brain and other organs. That's not even the worst part. I always thought the worst thing a caterpillar could do was give you pink eye, but it turns out that there's a caterpillar that can kill you. They live in the South American rainforest. Up to 500 people have died in South America because of this nasty caterpillar. One strange thing about the world's most dangerous caterpillar is that it's very small given how much damage it can do to people. <coughs> the assassin caterpillar is about two inches long and hides in the forest, where its pokey body makes it look like a leaf. During its larval stage, it's usually green and brown. The poison that this poisonous caterpillar injects is stored in bags at the base of each of its spikes. The problem with this poison is it's got a strong substance that stops blood from clotting. This can cause serious and widespread internal bleeding. You might be thinking, well, a little internal bleeding from a teeny tiny caterpillar doesn't sound that bad. Think again. This kind of bleeding can spread to your organs and your brain, which is a horrible way to die. Number 6. Kissing Bugs Kissing bugs are in the family Triatominae. Their name comes from the fact that they like to eat near people's mouths. Gross! Most of the 130 or so species in this subfamily feed on the blood of vertebrates. Only a few species feed on invertebrates. Most of them live in the Americas, where they're very common. A few species also live in Asia, Africa, and Australia. These bugs often live in groups with nesting vertebrates and feed on their blood. All species of Triatominae could spread Chagas disease in places where the parasite lives, which can be anywhere from the southern U.S. to north of Argentina. In his 1839 book, Journal and Remarks, also known as The Voyage of the Beagle, Charles Darwin wrote one of the earliest accounts of Triatominis in America at the turn of the 19th century. There's been a lot of talk in the medical world about whether Darwin's encounter with triatomines in Argentina caused his later long-term illness. It's unlikely that it did, though, because he didn't mention the fever that usually comes with the first infection of this kind. But don't be fooled. Chagas disease is a terrible illness you don't want to get, so stay away from these kissing bugs like the plague. Number 5. Siafu Ant 
Doralis, also called Siafu, is a large genus of army ants that are mostly found in Central and East Africa, but they can also be found in Southern Africa and Tropical Asia. The word Siafu comes from the Swahili language, and it's one of many similar words from the regional Bantu languages that native people use to talk about different kinds of these ants. Compared to other army ants, their colonies are huge and can have more than 20 million members. Workers show caste polymorphism, just like their American counterparts. Soldiers have especially big heads that power their mandibles, which look like scissors. They can sting, but they don't do it very often. Instead, they use their strong shearing jaws to snip at you, which is almost as bad. When food is scarce, they leave the hill and form columns of up to 50 million ants. These columns are dangerous to people, but they're also easy to avoid because each column can only move about 20 meters per hour. But some people are in danger if they can't move or when the columns go through their homes. Long lines of ants will fight fiercely against anyone or anything that seems to be a threat. And believe me, you versus 50 million ants is not going to end well for you. Number four, bullet ant. The name of this bug gives you an idea of what it feels like when it bites. People who have been both shot by a gun and bitten by a bullet ant say that the pain was kind of about the same. The bite can hurt intensely for up to 12 hours. According to our friend Schmidt, the author of the Schmidt Scale, being bitten by a bullet ant is, quote, pure, intense, brilliant pain. Like walking over burning charcoal with a three inch rusty nail in your heel. Only a real bullet would be worse than that. If you remember, the Schmidt pain index goes from one to four, four being the worst. He gives the bullet ant a score of four plus, which means very painful. These ants are among the largest in the ant family. They're about an inch long. Bullet ants aren't normally aggressive, though. They only attack when they have to. Ponerotoxin, a neurotoxic peptide that is released by their sting, makes muscles tighten up, burn, and feel very painful. Just be glad you're not from the Satara Mawe tribe in the Amazon rainforest. As part of growing up, the boys in the tribe have to put their hands in gloves full of angry bullet ants for 10 minutes. They repeat the ritual until the boy can handle being stung, hurt, and paralyzed without crying. Up to 20 times they might have to do this before passing the test. That's pretty rough. Number three, Florida harvester ant. In the south of the US, especially in Texas, people often see these red little devils. Harvester ants are really mean, even though they don't look like much. If you don't move out of the way when these guys start to swarm, you could get hurt. On a Schmidt pain scale, they cause a pain level three intensity. Schmidt says that a harvest ant bite is quote, bold and relentless, like someone using a drill to dig out your ingrown toenail. You're lucky if you've never been bitten by a harvester ant, because that sounds terrible. The venom of the harvester ants is the most dangerous of any insect genus on Earth. The most dangerous species in the genus is Pogonomerix maricopa. Its venom is 20 times stronger than the honeybee venom and 35 times stronger than Western diamondback rattlesnake venom. I don't know if you know about diamondback rattlesnakes, but that's a really strong venom. In Apache legends, tribes are said to have left their enemies to die on harvester ant mounds, but there's no evidence that these stories are true. True or not, the idea of it is pretty brutal. Number two. Pussy Moth The southern flannel moth, which is also called the Puss Moth, is a member of a family of moths called Megalopygidae. The inch-long larva has a long, luxuriant setae that looks like hair. It makes it look like a tiny Persian cat, which may be why it got the name Puss. It often has a bright orange stripe going down the middle. The fur of young larvae can be very curly, giving them a cottony, puffed-up look. The middle instar doesn't have a tail, and it looks like it had a bad hair day. The fur of the larva is made up of poisonous spikes that make people scream in agony if they touch them. When the caterpillar spines, which look like fur, touch the skin, it causes a grid-like hemorrhagic papular eruption with acute radiating pain, according to experts. The pain has been compared to a broken bone or a blow to the head, or it's even been called white hot. Sometimes the reactions are only in the area that was touched, but they're often very bad, like burning, swelling, nausea, headache, stomach problems, rash, blister, sometimes chest pain, numbness, trouble breathing. You don't want to pet this kitty, ever. Number one, human botflies. The human botfly is a type of botfly whose larvae feed on people and many other animals, like monkeys. 
Over 40 types of mosquitoes and muscoid flies, as well as one type of tick, have been found to carry botfly eggs. The female catches the mosquito, attaches her eggs to its body, and then lets go of it. Either the eggs hatch while the mosquito is eating, and the larvae enter through the mosquito bite, or the eggs fall off the muscoid fly while it's resting on the skin. The larvae grow for about eight weeks in the subcutaneous layers of the skin before dropping out to pupate in the soil for at least a week. The adults are big insects that look like bumblebees. The species can only be found in the Americas. It lives from southeastern Mexico to northern Argentina, Chile, and Uruguay. The main danger they pose to people is that they leave an open wound for their breathing holes, which makes people a lot more likely to get sick. Because the fly larva can only live for eight weeks if the cut doesn't get infected, infections are rare unless the patient kills the larva without taking it out completely which all sounds really unpleasant and disgusting. So, which of these creepy crawlies gave you the most creeps? Are there any other bugs that you would have included on our list today? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.